So let's talk about the hard stuff. Um, <laughs> it's so, actually not that hard if you really think about it. I mean, it, it's it's not hard. And and I'll tell you, so the the disagreement or the different way of looking at things is that you are opening a virtual food hall. Right. Okay. Put that in context to me so I understand what that means. So deliveries have been a part of our consumption for several years now. Sure. For many years, actually. In some cases, for as long as we've known, right? You used to have to call places. Uh, now you order it online. And now you've got Uber Eats taking a third of your check. Uh, there's so many ways yep. that deliveries have been a part of our existence. We call them the evil empire. On right, the evil on. empire. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's just been a part of the business for a long time. And so one kind of pain point or struggle that that we've all experienced at one point or another in our lives. You have different, whether it's dietary restrictions, um, like your home, where you've got somebody who eats meat, somebody who doesn't, right? right? And um, others where, like mine, where there are some nights that I don't know what my kids are going to agree to eat. Whether it's going to be just a French fry and chicken nuggets, or are they actually going to have the vegetables and protein that I, that I made for them? Sure. So that kind of mixed dynamic, or you're having a gathering and having some friends over, um, and you want to order different things, and you've got to strategically try to order all of these different things to arrive at a certain point. Sure. And so we thought, why not have them all under one streamlined operation, and you'd be able to get all of these concepts on one delivery. So whatever cuisine you're feeling like, whether it's Korean or burgers or tacos or dessert, and it can all come in one bag, right? And done correctly, utilize local concepts, help them expand and grow without having to invest another half a million to a million dollars in another location and still be able to trust that the people behind it are going to respect your product have been founders before, have done what been in your shoes and respect that this is your process and not me trying to impose on you what I feel your product should be. Sure. Okay. And so that's the general gist of it. Okay. I have a couple questions. Sure. Who delivers? So we've been talking about doing it in-house. Okay. Um, okay. This is good. All right. That's good. Don't even continue. But <laughs> where is it located? Uh, here in Coconut Grove. Oh, I like that. That's good. Um, who owns the property? A landlord. <laughs> okay, that's good. So are you running the platform completely? Yes. See, but, to th- but this is completely different than the things I have issues with. I agree. And right. I, I kind of know some of the things you have issues right, so with. I just, and we're probably going to agree on more than you think today. And I, I, th- <laughs> I think that that's great. I'm going to tell you the things that I have, like visceral disagreements with okay i hate lies right and when i say lies i mean a big company comes from nowhere out of nowhere and says hey we have this great thing and we're going to help you live out your dream your dream is to open a restaurant we have this great ghost kitchen right and we're just going to take a third of your check right you you can you can plot up here and you can do the things and whatever and then we're going to tout it as like we're very much about the community this is all reef technologies so, okay. like, so we're going to tout it like we're all about the community. We're going to give out $20,000 grants, which to landowners ain't dick. 20 grand is not anything. And I'm sorry that in the grander schemes of large restaurants, 20 grand is not a lot of money either. You know and I know 20 grand goes right. in the drop of a bucket. I, I know that better than anybody. <laughs> so those are things I have issues with. Apart from that, the delivery platform por- portion. So let's say they, they get some uh, younger chef or restaurant or whatever to buy into this thing. And then uh, then all of a sudden they're giving Reef Technologies or whoever owns that thing a third of their check. And then now they got to pay out to Uber Eats too. Right. So let's say Uber Eats says, yeah, we'll deliver the stuff for you and then we're going to deliver it. But my drivers aren't going to know shit about your product. My drivers aren't going to give a fuck about your product. My drivers are probably going to eat some of the product that's in the bag. That happens. Those, that happens often. Yeah. And uh, now I know now there's plenty of ways to seal bags. There's also staples, which are nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> staples have worked. Have worked. Really great. They work. But I, I love the little sealable bags. The sealable I think they're, bags, they're great. Right? But we're going to pay extra for that bag that we, at, at that point, need to charge the guest for, which they don't know, but we have to make sure we do that. Absolutely. 
And then on top of that, if you're a standalone brick and mortar restaurant, right? A lot of times to like the way I would think is, okay, so if my thing is 10 bucks, I'm going to charge 13 for this thing to equate the 30% loss. Right. But at that point, the perception on the market is that you're expensive for whatever that product may be. That's correct. So the chain of events is very weird. I believe that places like Reef Technologies, I'm going to speak about them because I've just been speaking about them a lot in the last four days, is the Trojan horse of all restaurants, right? I do think that, I mean, your concept is very cool. I don't see it as the same thing, and people maybe could say I'm hypocritical just because we're sitting in front of each other, but I don't see it as the same thing. I don't see it as the same thing either, and that, I, because, was, that was really the point of it because I saw some of what you see in a lot of the virtual space, um, and, I mean, inauthenticity drives me pretty crazy. I love this one. When, I, I, when you talk oh. about, like, you know, the guy from Jersey Shore and the subs. I, I don't know if you've seen that. Ike Shahada? Uh, I, I don't know which Thanks one. One of the Jersey Shore characters has now a virtual kitchen. Oh, no, he does? Yeah. Oh, yeah? And you can, you can subscribe to like you you as a restaurant owner can have his concept being cooked out of your kitchen and delivered on Uber Eats. Fuck that. Exactly my point. Who wants that? I apparently uh, Mario Lopez has a tar- has a torta concept, Mariah Carey has a cookies concept. Mario Lopez from Say by the Bell? Yeah. That Why Mario the Lopez. fuck does anyone give a fuck about Mario Lopez to begin with? <laughs> I'm so confused. Why does like the 20 people that watch E uh, Isn't a Wiz Khalifa? I think also has Wiz, so same company also does the no Tiger's Chicken Bites is the one I think you're thinking about. Uh, listen, it's Tiga. I think, I think it's Tiga. Is it no. Tiga? It's Tiga. That's no. how you say it. It's Tiga. I would. I, I, I don't want his chicken bites either. But yeah, so same company does all of those concepts. By the way, um, it's fucking and ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I I looked at it and I know there's kind of two schools of thought on virtual kitchens they're either going to be the next trillion dollar industry or they're trash and they're going to be gone tomorrow i have a much more simplistic view those that have a good product and provide a good service are going to do great and those that don't won't Correct. and it's it's relatively simple unless you happen to have a bad product and happen to be wildly convenient right i think that's the only the, well, o- the only uh, kind of notch where you don't have to have a great product if you're extremely convenient the trojan horse here is that a place like the the collaboration between Reef Technologies and Uber Eats or right. Grubhub or Postmates or however they decide to work. I, I agree. Together. It makes it really difficult because now you have two people that own your customer and it's not still not you. Yeah. You don't own the data. And that's that's always been my kind of query. And I was a pretty early adapter to Uber Eats. I mean, when yeah. we were one of the early sign, uh, sign-ons here in Miami and... You know, we fell for the whole spiel of, well, your dining business is going to stay the same, et cetera. It's all right, going to be. Right, but your labor is going to go up and, yeah. Right. And then you're and, not making the same amount of money. I was horribly wrong. Um, yeah, I, I was I was right for about six weeks. That was right. that was how long the, the numbers that they laid out actually made sense for us. And it was all downhill from there. Yeah, I think also in the restaurant industry, I believe because food funnels itself a certain way because you have such like so much dry product as into fresh product, it takes time to see the numbers trickle downwards or upwards. Right. It takes a little bit of time to see that in both your labor. I mean, labor is a little more immediate, but like your food costs, for instance, it like it takes, sees a little bit of time to, for it to incrementally go up or right. incrementally go down. Yeah, at least a couple of inventory I usually cycles. Say, I, yeah, I usually say six to 12 weeks is a good barometer to see what status a kitchen really is in. Right. So... My, and, like, I, I hate the, the dressing yourself up as something that you're not. Like, Reef Technologies owns land. They are real estate people. That's right. all they give a fuck about. What they're doing is they're selling themselves to large investors and saying, hey, we want to buy property all over the country, and we're going to sell it as this devil in a white dress. And then they're going to other people, and they're saying, hey, we think you're great. We really want to push you. We know you're struggling to open a restaurant, and it's so hard, and it's so expensive, and we know it's so hard. Let us do this for you. And then you end up in this fucking cold-ass, almost like situation of a warehouse cooking food, and you're putting your what could be, for some people, their first interpretation of their food and their passion into a box. Right. And then you lose all soul of everything, right? 
I'm like a hopeless romantic when it comes to food. <laughs> I, I see am. that. Just, just incredibly, <laughs> like, I'm about dining. I'm incredibly romantic about it. I think that there's beauty in it. And I think at the same time, if we continue to let these people chip away at it, it will die. There will always be spaces in the world for what, like, we do here. But if we continue to chip away at the, at the thing and we start to create a machine, it's going to go away. And you think so, though? I mean, I well, here's the thing. I, I said it post-pandemic that there's a good chance that higher-end dining may do better. Middle-of-the-road dining may try to find its footing a little bit. And I think that that is kind of happening, right? I feel like people wanted an experience post-COVID. Right. We're still in COVID, but post-COVID, Right. Uh, and I feel like I, I see that daily. I, I feel I feel it from them that they wanted to get out. They wanted to do the things that they pined to do forever. When we were like, you know, human just, beings are not meant to live in isolation. We're not built I mean, for that shit. I, I get it. I understand it. I'm just saying. I feel like if we continue to push in that direction, we continue to let people manipulate our brains to believe a certain thing. It will happen. It's all about like, you know, that just water drip, right? It's like if you keep on doing it, it's going to fucking it it'll have its effect long term. And all we're doing is allowing these people to create more value on their property and they're the, really the ones making money because if right. you don't own the dirt, you're in trouble. And especially in that concept, I don't know personally, but I would dare to say it's probably year to year leases in those spaces. I don't I don't know what they're Contracts are like, particularly when it comes to the restaurants, or I, I've, I've seen vaguely. I know food halls, for instance, are year to year. Right. And a, a lot of their, conceptually, their stuff is kind of like a food hall without people actually entering the property. Right. So. But, and you also don't have the ability to mix and match any of those concepts. You're ordering from the individual platforms. Yeah. Um, the, the interesting part for me, I don't think anybody in their first, I don't think anybody's first venture into the restaurant world should be with Reef. I agree. But I think if you've got one location, right, and you've got this kind of mom and pop operation, you'd like to do something, expand a little bit, add an extra stream of income without and don't have the resources to raise money or do et cetera. I don't know that it's necessarily a bad thing. And but are, are, are you OK with them taking 50 percent of your nut? I mean, think about it. Uber Eats takes a piece. And then Reef takes a piece. That's 50% of the nut right there. So right, you're left you're, with what? But you're also not the operator, right? So it is a it is a licensing or a franchising deal. Yeah. So you have to be kind of comfortable with that world as it is before you even have that conversation. If you're anti-franchising, they're not the person to talk to. Sure. Right? Uh, but you also don't have to have all the legalities and all of the headaches of franchising, which I know very well. Yeah. And I would advise anybody not to fucking do it. <laughs> um, I learned it the hard way. Um, but, you know, there are some people that I would actually recommend, like, hey, you should probably look at Reef. And the way I look at it from a diner's perspective, the times I'm going to order delivery and the times are that I'm going to go out and have dinner – never compete with each other because if i want to go out i'm not even considering delivery and the times i need delivery i cannot consider going out i you said something earlier i don't remember the exact words you used but is the it's like the the fake so if you look through like an uber eats right because i'll do this sometimes when i've smoked a little too much oh and I'll you just, see those concepts that are yeah, like what that's, the fuck is yeah, that it's just like it's like annette's pretzels and and things right it's uh, jimmy's wings and uh burgers and it's oh, just like there's like a thousand wing concepts on uber eats right of now. course right which actually if they were to think about it wings are expensive i don't know why they're doubling down on the wing but there's other things you could double down on you go through it I would dare to say 50% of them aren't actual concepts at all. They're right. just offshoots of an offshoot of a thing. Have you ever tried to look up their like Instagram or website? Yeah, never. See, I'm a I sick I don't fucking go, bastard. I, I do don't, that shit. I don't go that deep. It's That's a lot of effort. I, I, I go through much more effort in life than I need to. <laughs> I, um, got <laughs> I got it. I got it. It's a really bad habit of mine. Thank you.